girls, Miss Kathy here, and we are ready for another week, week five of Greek myths, Greek myth mania. So, who are we doing this week, you may ask? And if you look at your packet, we are doing Apollo and Artemis. Hopefully you had a chance to print out this packet. Seuss, did you print out your packet? Seuss seems very unconcerned about whether she printed out her packet. I will have to speak to her. Okay, I'll let her borrow mine. So let's see what we're going to do first. You can print out in a separate link. There were all the coloring pages for Apollo and Artemis. You, I forgot to bring the coloring pages in, but you can find them online. And there is a link as well to follow along with my very ugly Dolores Greek myth classic book. And open to page 40, 42 online, and we find Apollo being first. Let's find out what all these pictures mean here. Apollo grew rapidly as all gods did. And when he was full grown, Zeus sent him off in a chariot drawn by white swans to win for himself the Oracle of Delphi. What are you doing, girl? Let's go back one page here and go into the birth of Apollo. One of the islands that Poseidon raised out of the sea was Delos. It was so newly created that it was still floating about on the water. The little island was barren, meaning nothing grew on it yet except a single palm tree. In its shade, the two great gods, Apollo and Artemis, were born. Zeus had married the goddess Leto, and when Hera found out that Leto was expecting twins, she flew into a jealous rage. We know Hera is very jealous, and ordered all the lands in the world to refuse Leto shelter. All of them. Chased away from every land, poor Leto wandered from place to place and could not rest to give birth to her twins. At last she came to Delos, and the little island welcomed her. Since it was still floating and not quite land, it was free from Hera's bidding. Exhausted, Leto sank down in the shade of the palm tree, but still she could not give birth to her twins, for Hera forbade Elithia, the goddess of childbirth, to go to her. Without her help, no child could be born. All the other goddesses felt sorry for Leto and tried to sway Hera by offering her a beautiful necklace. It was nine yards long, made of gold and amber and Hera could not resist it. She let Alethea go, and Iris whisked her down the rainbow to Leto. Nine yards long. That is 27 feet. Can you imagine a necklace that long? Leto's first child was Artemis, a girl as beautiful as the moon, with hair as dark as the night. She was to be the goddess of the hunt and all newborn creatures. Then Apollo came into the world. He was fair as the sun, and he was to be the god of music, light, and reason. Zeus was filled with joy at the sight of his beautiful twins, and he gave them each a silver bow and a quiver full of arrows. The arrows of Artemis were soft as moonbeams and brought painless death. Those of Apollo were hard and piercing as the rays of the sun. Zeus blessed the little island and fastened it to the bottom of the sea. Grass and flowers burst forth from the barren ground, and Delos became the richest of all the Greek islands. Pilgrims flocked to it and loaded it with temples and treasures to honor Leto and her twins. You can see the picture there. So that's how they came into being. Now going back to Apollo... No place in Greece was as sacred as Delphi on the steep slopes of Mount Parnassus. Sulfurous fumes rose from the deep cleft in the mountainside. A sibyl, 
the priestess of Delphi, sat on a tripod over the cleft, and the vapors put her into a magic sleep. In her dreams, the sibyl heard the voice of Mother Earth coming up from the depths and repeated the mystic words that she heard. Priests stood around the sibyl and explained the meanings of her muttered prophecy to the pilgrims who had come to the Oracle of Delphi to learn about their future. The Oracle was guarded by the darksome dragon, Python, that's what we're seeing there, who lay coiled around the sacred place. Old age had made him mean and so ill-tempered that the nymphs fled from the sacred spring nearby, and the birds no longer dared to sing in the trees. The oracle had warned Python that Leto's son would one day destroy him. He had tried to devour Leto when she wandered about looking for a place to give birth to her children, but she had escaped. When the old black dragon saw radiant Apollo flying toward him in his golden chariot, the golden sun chariot, he knew that his last hour had come, but he sold his life dearly. He unleashed his fury, spitting fire and venom, and his black scaly body did not stop its writhing and coiling until Apollo had shot him with a thousand of his silver shafts. In torrents did the dragon's venom flow deep down the mountainside, and the oracle of Delphi was Apollo's. Now there was light and joy on the once somber slopes of Mount Parnassus. The air was filled with sweet tunes as the birds in the sky and the nymphs of the sacred spring returned to sing Apollo's praise. The voice of the young god rose above all the others, for he was also the god of music. So a lot of things to look at in that picture. Apollo coming down on his white swans and creature python curled up at the bottom. And that's a picture of the python when he was chasing poor Leto, Apollo's mother, and she was trying to give birth. Okay, now let's find out about his sister, Apartimus. Artemis. Artemis was a newborn goddess, and when she went to her father Zeus and asked him to grant her a wish, she asked for this. She wanted to remain forever a young maiden hunting through the woods, and she asked him to promise never to make her marry. Zeus consented, and then she asked him for fifty fleet nymphs as companions and a pack of lop-eared hounds to hunt with. Her father gave her all that she asked, and she herself caught four hinds with golden antlers and harnessed them to her silver chariot. When the moon's magic light shone over echoing hills and wooded valleys, Artemis hunted with the nymphs and her hounds. After a wild hunt, the goddess loved to bathe in a quiet pool, but woe to the mortal who happened to see her when she was bathing. One night, quite by chance, a young hunter whose name was Acteon came upon the pool in the woods where Artemis and her nymphs were bathing. He should have taken to his heels and run for his life, but instead he stood spellbound by the sight of the goddess. Artemis was furious. While the nymphs flung a tunic over her shoulders, the goddess dipped her hand into the pool and threw a handful of water at Acteon. The moment the silvery drops touched his forehead, antlers sprouted, and rapidly all of Acteon changed into a stag. His own hounds leaped at him, and to his horror he could not utter a human sound to call them off. They brought him down, never knowing that the deer was their own master. No mortal shall live to boast that he has seen Artemis bathing, said the goddess, and she picked up her bow and arrows and went on hunting with her nymphs. Artemis was a cold and pitiless goddess, sometimes. We'll see that she helps people, too, but not right then in this story, huh? Here's a picture of the Acteon turning into a stag. It's like a deer with antlers on it. 
But the story continues. Apollo and Artemis, though different as day and night, one is the goddess of the night and one the god of the day, the sun, were very fond of each other and they both adored their mother. No one could say a belittling word about gentle Leda without arousing the wrath of her twins. There was a queen of Thebes whose name was Niobe. She was beautiful and rich and blessed with fourteen children. Zeus himself was her grandfather, and she was very proud. Why worship Leto, she said to her people. Build me a temple and wash up me in her stead. I have seven sons and seven daughters, while she has only one of each. When Apollo and Artemis heard this, they grew very angry. Niobe's disrespect could not go unpunished. Apollo shot his hard arrows at Niobe's seven sons. By no fault of their own, they were torn from life in the prime of their youth. Then Artemis let fly her painless shafts at the seven daughters. Quietly, they lay down on their beds and died. Niobe's proud heart was broken. She wept for so long that the gods at last took pity on her and changed her into an unfeeling rock. That's how they took pity. They changed her into a rock. Still, inside the rock, a spring welled up, and water-like tears trickled down the face of the hard stone. Apollo had many wives, but Zeus kept his promise to Artemis and never made her marry. Only once she promised her hand to a suitor, but that was a promise she had no intention of keeping. The suitor was Otis, a gigantic son of Poseidon. Otis and his brother, Ephelates, were almost 60 feet tall when they reached manhood, and still they went on growing. The gods watched them with concern, for an oracle had predicted that neither gods nor mortals could kill the giant brothers. Mother Earth, however, watched them with pleasure. She was still angry with Zeus for keeping her sons, the Titans, in Tartarus. Remember that pit underneath? the world, and she hoped that Otis and Ephelades would grow big enough to overthrow Zeus. One night, as the brothers slept with their ears to the ground, they heard Mother Earth whisper that such tall and handsome youths should not let themselves be ruled by Zeus. That was just what they had been thinking themselves, for they were vain, as many strong people are. They pulled up mountains, piled them on top of each other, and built a vast new mountain as high as Olympus. From the top, they called to Zeus to surrender his powers to them and move out of his palace with the other Olympians. Artemis could stay and become his bride, shouted Otis, and Ephelades would take Hera. Ha! Huh. How do you think that's going to go over? The two goddesses tossed their heads with scorn, and Zeus, in a fury, hurled thunderbolt, thunderbolts at the ruffians. Zeus's thunderbolts glanced off harmlessly, and when Ares rushed out to fight them, they grabbed him and crammed him into a bronze jar and clamped the lid shut. Remember, Ares is the god of war. So he went out to defend Olympus all by himself, and now he's clamped in a jar. For once, Zeus was really worried, but Apollo, the god of reason, said that if no one could kill them, then they must be tricked into killing each other. He persuaded Artemis to pretend that she was in love with Otis. Otis smirked when Apollo called to him that Artemis thought so much of him she had accepted his proposal and would wait for him on the island of Noxus. That made Ephelades jealous. Why hadn't Hera fallen in love with him? Wasn't he as handsome as his brother? but he swallowed his pride and went to Noxus with his brother to meet the bride. When Artemis saw the two brothers arriving, she quickly changed herself into a white deer and ran across their path. She darted to and fro between them, and the brothers, who were eager huntsmen, threw their javelins at the deer. Cleverly, she dodged, and the brothers fell to the ground, pierced by each other's javelins. Neither gods nor mortals could kill the giant brothers, but now they had put an end to each other and were thrown into Tartarus, tied back to back with writhing snakes. Hmm. These Greeks were awesome for thinking of punishments, remember? All of the gods thanked Artemis for saving them and pulled Ares out of the jar where he had been crouching all the while, howling and screaming. 
And there's a picture of him inside his jar, howling and screaming. He would be mad, huh? It's like a genie trapped in a bottle. Okay. So, some stories about Apollo and Artemis, the twins. Let's take a look at them in some of our other books here. The Weird But True. We have Artemis first, goddess of the hunt. Artemis spent her time in the forest frolicking and hunting with invisible arrows. She is... Mm -hmm. They say she is the goddess of nighttime. Story behind the stars. When the night sky is filled with stars, one of the easiest constellations to spot is Orion, a collection of stars that make up his club, lion's belt, lion's skin, belt, and sword. The story goes that Orion, a loyal hunting partner and friend of Artemis, was placed among the stars by the goddess after she accidentally shot and killed him. Some stories say that her twin brother, Apollos, tricked her into shooting him. Distraught by his death, Artemis made a home for him in the sky alongside his hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor. Today, Orion remains as one of the brightest and most recognizable constellations in the sky. So if you get a sky chart, or some of you might have it on your parents' phone, you can go up, hold it outside, and actually find certain times of the year he is above us and we can see him. I've gone out and done that. So, a little bit about Artemis. And it mentions in here the story of her killing off Niobe's children. A temple dedicated to Artemis in Turkey is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. I did not realize that. See, you learn something new every day. And then we have Apollo, god of the arts, music, healing, and light. Call him the sun god. And it talks about him killing Python. Uh, why he's weird, Apollo would disguise himself as a dolphin to help sailors at sea. Hmm, not so much known about that. After teaching men the art of medicine, Apollo became known as the healer, his claim to fame. He is in tune. Remember, his cows were the ones that Hermes had tricked, and then Hermes gave him the lyre, a picture of a lyre up there, as the first lyre, and invented a new instrument, and then Apollo wasn't mad at him anymore. In artwork, Apollo is usually shown with a wreath of interlocking branches and dark laurel leaves around his head. This represents his unrequited love for a nymph named Daphne, who was transformed into a laurel tree by the river god Peneus while trying to escape Apollo's advances. While Apollo may have been unlucky in love, he wasn't in sports. So in a nod to Apollo's athleticism, athletes in ancient times began receiving crowns similar to the gods for winning a race or event. Today, the tradition continues with winners sporting laurel crowns at the modern Olympics and all major events like the New York City Marathon. There's a picture of people wearing their laurel crowns. Laurel is a type of plant. I'm just seeing if there's anything else on here. We know about him and his cattle. And he was very protective of them. And the last book to check here is... The Greek Mythology Book from National Geographic. A picture of Apollo, god of music, and a dolphin. We said he sometimes turned himself into dolphins to lead the sailors. Apollo is god of many things, music, poetry, arts. He often walked with the Muses, who were nine graceful daughters of Zeus and the titan Mimoson. Calliope inspired poets to write epic poems. These are the names of the muses. Arato love poems, Euterpe nature poems, Thalia gave humor to those who wanted to cause laughter, Melpomene gave insight to those who wanted to cause tears, Urania helped people understand stars and planets, Cleo helped them understand the past, 
Terpsichore led her sisters in dance, and Polyhymnia led the song. So those are the names of the nine muses of the arts. And it tells the story of how the twins were born. Then we get to Artemis, goddess of the hunt. Artemis never married, but she was rarely alone. Dogs and sea nymphs and wood nymphs ran with her on the hunt through woods as prey fled from the famed archer. Because she hardly ever missed. Warrior women. In Greek mythology, Amazons were skillful archers who lived without men, just like Artemis. But unlike the hunter Artemis, they were warriors on horseback. While many scholars call them fictitious, the Greek historian Herodotus claimed they are based on ancestors to the Sarmatians, living from the 5th to the 4th century AC, whose women rode into battle beside the men. Others see their origin in tribes in southern Ukraine and Russia, or in Crete during Minian times, all cultures that had women warriors, just like Artemis. And so today we have a major company called Amazon, worldwide company. Okay, so those are our book pages about Apollo and Artemis. Let's take a look at our packet here. You can read more about each of them at these sites that are listed, the Duxter's sites, and then take the quiz at the end. You can have those pages read aloud to you too if you don't want to read it yourself and you can still take the quiz or you don't even have to read it. You can just go to the end of the web page and take the quiz and see if you can answer all the questions based on what you learned reading together now. Um, other stories about Apollo are at that website. Find out which Greek god you are based on your personality. There's a personality quiz on the National Geographic site, so that's kind of fun to do. If that link doesn't work, though, and I tell you what to type in instead, because so I was having troubles with the link. Play a game about Artemis, which is a multiple choice quiz, and you only have so much time to answer each question, but you are allowed to have lifelines and there is a bonus round at the end. So that's kind of like an online computer game. Since Apollo is the sun god and Artemis the goddess of the moon, let's make a night and day craft. And that's what you have printed out at the end here. I began making mine because you need some paper plates that are painted. So you have to do the painting ahead of time so that it can dry. But I have half painted blue and half painted black with my white speckles on it. It's pretty easy to step through, like they tell you, give you step-by-step -step instructions. And it mentions having this template at the end. If you are not able to print out a template, you don't have to use this template. You can use any sun and moon that you would like off the internet or draw your own. I happened to print out the template and I was going to glue them on here with you and then show you how easy this craft is. All I did was do the painting and then up here I'm going to put the blue cloud underneath the moon. So first thing I'm going to do is glue on my crescent moon here. And then I'm going to put the glue, a little blue cloud on top of it. Put that anywhere you want in your sky. And then we'll glue on the sun and the little cloud with the sun. And this is an interactive night and day chart because you get to spin the plate around a little bit. So there's my moon. And now on this side, the bright blue, I'm going to put the sun and a cloud. And again, if you were not able to print out the template, that has these exact pictures on it, no big deal. You can use any picture that you want of the sun. Or, maybe even better, draw your own. 
Sometimes those are the best kind. And then we put our last thing here. We got a little white cloud. Put that on. Okay, so I have my sun and moon and clouds glued onto the plate. And then ahead of time, I also did the cutting out of another plate with the top part cut out like that, just like it says in the directions. And now I'm going to attach this to this plate behind here. I have a hole already made in the sun and moon plate. Let's thread this through here like that. And with the brass fastener, do it like that. And now I can say in the morning when I get up, it is daytime, and as it starts to get be dark, going toward nighttime, now I can say, now it is nighttime. And you can spin it around. So, a cool craft that you can make. If you want to have hang it up, you would have to put one hole through the back plate on the top, and one through the back plate on the bottom. You don't want to put any holes on this front plate because you have to spin that around. But you can do it like that. And then if you have it hanging on a hook on the wall or on your doorknob or something, you just would take this, you need two pieces of string and you would take it off the doorknob when you want to put it onto the daytime and turn your plate around and hang it so that part's up on the top. And then put it the other way when it is nighttime and have that part up on top. Or if you don't care about that, you can just put one and have the one be upside down sometimes. So that is entirely up to you what you want to do with your craft. But I thought it was cute. And then we also have a word search. It has a list of all the gods and some of the characters and things that we haven't even talked about yet. Never really talked about Medusa or the Minotaur, Midas. These are some other myths, characters, and creatures that we will hear about in future weeks. So that is the word search. And that concludes Greek mythology, Greek myth mania for week number five. So I hope you were able to follow along and do some of the activities. Check out some of the websites because they are pretty cool and see what you can learn additional about Apollo Artemis. You can do the coloring sheets so you can have your whole complete set done pretty soon. And I will see you back here another week for learning about some more of those wonderful Olympians. But for now, Seuss, who has already signed out for the night, I don't know if you can see that or not. There's Seuss sleeping away. And Miss Kathy from Shaler North Hills Library saying thank you for watching. Remember, the library is open now every day except Sunday, just a little bit different hours each day. So check the website and find out the schedule for sure. But you can come in and pick up more great Greek God books on your own or any books you want to get at all. We are still happy to serve your requests if you don't want to come into the library. We are fine with picking out things for you. But if you want to pick them out yourself, you're welcome to come in and visit us. So hope to see you soon and stay tuned for next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.